everybody. Luke Groman, FFTT. Hope everybody is well and had a great holiday weekend. Uh, I guess it was more than a holiday weekend, last two holiday weekends. But I hope everyone had a great New Year's. Uh, it's 2021. So uh, I think uh, for me, the overriding theme for 2021 is, uh, and I hate to be the one to say this, but I think it's just something we need to be ready for, prepared for, is um, it, just because the calendar rolled over, I don't know that uh, 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 that, that means things are immediately going to change uh, unless we really act to change them or we we uh, uh, really take uh, and, and prepare ourselves for the potential things of the trends that we've been discussing for a long time. And so with that, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to start off with a fun question from Mary C. Uh, hi, Mary. How are you? So many kids all over America who are seniors are having their baseball careers cut short in high school. What are your son's friends doing and what are you doing to expose him to great baseball competition in this COVID era to give him max exposure for college recruiting? It's been an interesting thing. Um, uh, the class of 2021 is really uh, 2020, uh, but uh, really 2021, putting a bit of a bind junior year, uh, summer of junior year, after your junior year is a big year for baseball recruiting. And so um, thus far, uh, luckily my son is only a junior this year. Uh, but a lot of his friends have had great uh, uh, mentors. They've had uh, uh, the summer team and high school coaches making a lot of calls. And so it's it's happening. I mean, I guess I would answer the question two ways. Number one, and I think this is ap apropos for a lot these days, a lot of baseball college recruiting these days gets done via the iPhone, uh, via smartphone, uh, because you can get such high quality videotape put together videos, put it in front of coaches, the coaches, the scouts, they don't need to go out and look at everybody. They can see the film. They can break the film down in slow motion and see things. Um, the second thing is uh, what I've told them is, is, look, ultimately, if you take care of your business off the field, on the field, you're going to have a lot of options. And if you don't take care of your business off the field and on the field, you won't. And so uh, we've just been encouraging him uh, uh, to take care of his business as coaches have been doing the same. So with that, we're going to jump into the macro stuff uh, from Paul C. I'm going to go out on his question is, I'm going to go out on a limb, suggest that most people, including myself, want to know how you think gold will perform this year and especially over the next six months. Thanks for your content. Really appreciate your work. Thank you for reading it, Paul. Uh, so in my opinion, I think gold's going to do really well again. Uh, the U.S. fiscal situation is irrecoverable, and uh, barring a, a, a few Hail Marys. And that's really what I was alluding to when I came on here, which is just because it's 2021 doesn't change the fact that U.S. Uh, true interest expense, uh, which is entitlements, gross interest expense, and treasury payments, doesn't change the fact that those are 120% of U.S. federal tax receipts. And so once we realize that, uh, doesn't matter if it's 2021. It's the same issue. These same issues are going to start presenting themselves in macro. And so, you know, to me, um, I think gold does really well. And I think Bitcoin, in my opinion, is is a is a big positive for gold. It's showing the system. It, 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 it's showing that the system has an issue and it's showing it in a way that can't it can't be masked by paper derivatives the way gold has been masked. It's it's a thermometer that is not being able to be broken. And it's telling you it's a temperature gauge where the pressure, to mix my metaphors, is rising and rising and rising. And so I think it's an important sign, signpost, uh, which uh, is, the, uh, is the price of Bitcoin. Um, ultimately, um, I think the rising price of Bitcoin uh, puts the status quo, which owns gold and not Bitcoin, in a bit of a bind. Um, they, I think, are coming to a point where they have to make a decision to let gold go, let it rise significantly and recapitalize the system and their own balance sheets or begin to cede increasing amounts of control of the system to those that own a lot of Bitcoin. And I think that statement would have been laughed at six months ago, three months ago. I think over what we've seen in the last three weeks, uh, I think fewer people are laughing now uh, about that. And so to me, my view is ultimately what Bitcoin's doing is a bit of a price target for gold uh, in terms of um, maybe not literally a price target, but possibly. But I think the system's going to have to choose let gold run, given what Bitcoin is doing, because Bitcoin is is providing a window in the uh, into the world of what's happening in terms of the Russians moved out of dollars into gold. U.S. citizens are now moving out of dollars into Bitcoin. So uh, something that I think needs to be done there, and, and I think it ultimately bodes well for gold. Uh, from Sean W., uh, chances the Fed creates legal tender in 2021. I think the chance they create legal tender is extremely low. However, I would ask what is the difference uh, between creating legal tender and between the Biden administration running a $4 trillion deficit, including handing out increasing amounts of cash 
and then the Fed financing those deficits uh, by putting a quorum or a majority of those deficits on their balance sheet, never to be removed from their balance sheet. And in my opinion, the differences are semantics, barely. In other words, that's basically the Fed creating legal tender through a marriage with Treasury. And so uh, ultimately, for our purposes, technically, they never they never create legal tender, but I don't care. It's likely to be good for gold, gold miners, Bitcoin, silver, etc. Uh, from VZ, if gold is brought back into the monetary system, what will this mean for Bitcoin? Uh, in my opinion, it's be very bullish for Bitcoin. Neutral reserve asset for the people uh, is how I see gold, or excuse me, how I see Bitcoin and and, and gold, the neutral reserve asset at the central bank and sovereign level. Uh, from KNL, uh, do energy commodities benefit from the currency debasement uh, this cycle? Yes, but in my opinion, only once the dollar falls enough versus the euro and the yuan. Um, one of the key points I've been talking about as it relates to multi-currency energy pricing, where you've seen the marginal oil barrel priced in euros, priced in yuan, this means that uh, multi-currency energy pricing plus the law of one price, which says the same commodity cannot be priced in two different prices or in two different currencies. Basically, what that means is that if the marginal oil barrel is priced in euro, priced in yuan, then the dollar price of oil is likely not going to be able to rise until the dollar falls against the euro and yuan cross rate in FX markets. So I don't think you're going to see energy uh, prices really run away until the dollar falls significantly against the euro and the yuan um, in this cycle. Uh, from JL, can you see a scenario where the U.S. government and banks eventually dictate the price of Bitcoin as they've done with gold through cash-settled derivatives? Uh, I think they tried in 2017 and 2018, and you can find our tweets on that uh, as Bitcoin was hitting 17, 18,000 back in late 17, early 18, uh, where we specifically cited this as a risk, saying that this was how they controlled the gold market. Interestingly, one of the two Bitcoin futures exchanges uh, shut down in either March or April of 2019. Uh, and that just happened to coincide right around the bottom in Bitcoin. I'm not saying it caused it, uh, but all I'll seek, well, to me, the way I look at it from a very simplistic standpoint is the fewer amount of paper derivatives outstanding on Bitcoin, the better it is for the price of Bitcoin. Ultimately, um, it, it, it's easier to buy physical Bitcoin than it is to buy paper Bitcoin, to buy Bitcoin futures. And that is when you marry it with the decentralization of Bitcoin relative to the centralization of, of physical gold, where physical gold is held at centralized locations around the world, is a way in which Bitcoin is significantly better than gold. And it makes it very hard uh, for governments to use cash settled derivatives and unallocated paper accounts to control the price of Bitcoin as they have done with gold for a long time. Uh, from Jim F., LBMA is threatening to blacklist UAE gold. What are your thoughts? You know, it's a very interesting article, not least of which because we saw Vietnam, which just reopened its, its borders to gold imports, and Switzerland, which is obviously a, a global hub of the gold business, uh, put on the currency manipulator list for, by the U.S., which is curious in both cases. However, to directly answer your question, I'm not sure what it means. Uh, my spidey sense tingles a bit because I noticed that um, Western agencies like the LBMA are not in a big rush to blacklist any oil uh, supplies from any Middle Eastern countries that uh, they disagree with their social policies, as seems to be the case here with the UAE. Uh, so I don't know. It makes me wonder if there's something else here afoot, but I just don't know enough on it uh, more than that to comment. Uh, from Darren S., if we do get inflation and it runs too, if it runs far or too hot, uh, how can it be controlled if yields are pinned? And to me, this is one of the $64,000 questions out here this year is, I, and first, I don't think it's going to be controlled. And I think this is something a lot of the uh, you know, bond bulls, uh, I don't think they appreciate this as much as they should. To me, the question is less, will they control it? Um, and more, when will they control it if it happens? Because they can always control it by raising rates enough or by raising taxes, uh, or controlling inflation. But to me, the when is really the key part. And, and the when to me is whenever there's been enough inflation with yields pinned that uh, U.S. debt to GDP is back to a sustainable level. We're at I don't know, 135% of GDP now. I would probably say a price target for that would be 65 to 80% debt to GDP is sustainable. So you, they would need to let it run for a while. So I don't think they're going to be in a very big rush uh, to stop inflation if it picks up. And importantly, inflation is one of those things where it can go little by little and all at once. So caveat emptor there. And then two late questions uh, that I thought were really interesting from uh, from Knox. Uh, Knox said, 
Luke, wondering if a weakness of gold is that it is reserved by central banks, and that gives us an incentive for the U.S. to keep fighting the fight. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is not reserved by central banks. Is that the actual property that is allowing it to run? What if central banks reserve Bitcoin? Does the status change? Uh, a lot of questions there. Um, I think historically a weakness for gold is that it has been that it's been reserved by central banks. Um, I think there's been a lot of interest in keeping gold down to preserve the dollar system as structured. I think there's a lot of incentive now around the world, including in the U.S., to change that system because China has been using that system against the U.S. Uh, to uh, to win, for lack of a better word. And there's uh, I, I think we can see that now. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is not reserved by central banks. Uh, obviously, I, th I think that's uh, that's true. Uh, and if that changed, I think that would be a huge that would be a huge change. I think it would absolutely be a huge change. Uh, I think the actual property that is allowing it to run is really I, I think it is a better reserve asset on all but two fronts, um, three fronts, really. Number one, liquidity. But that's getting better, uh, obviously. Uh, number two, gold is held by central banks, Bitcoin isn't. And in the case of the U.S. and the U.S. being the issuer of the global reserve currency, uh, the U.S. can use gold to basically delever its, its balance sheet. The Fed, the, the Treasury can tell the Fed to remonetize the gold at a big number. Fed does so, and then that money goes into the Treasury general account. We spend the money into the economy uh, without a commensurate rise in debt uh, outstanding, and the U.S. could in a weekend, massively delever and use gold to do that, but not Bitcoin. And so I think that's number two, where I think gold has an advantage versus Bitcoin. And number three, and this is a little bit wonkish, but, and I don't think it matters in the near term. However, Bitcoin has an ongoing energy debt. In other words, you have to keep consuming electricity to keep the system running. Whereas gold, once you've got the gold coin in your hand, in, in the vault, that's fully paid for. There is not an ongoing energy debt in the same way that there is. And so there would, in theory, I think, Certain interests, and in particular massive oil exporters, uh, particularly if their their oil supplies are depleting, might have an interest in having um, at least some of their reserves in a reserve currency with no ongoing energy debt, or at least the absolute minimum ongoing energy debt, which in which case gold wins versus Bitcoin. And that ties into your follow-up question, uh, uh, Knox, which was Nash equilibrium suggest there can be only one focal point as a neutral reserve asset. Can there actually be two in today's economy? And uh, I think, yes, there can. And I, that's why is because I think energy exporters in particular uh, may want to have a reserve asset uh, that has no energy debt uh, attached to it. And I think culturally, obviously, it's been around quite a bit longer, but I, that's how I'm thinking about it at this point. But uh, as you might be able to tell from some of my answers, um, a lot of what is happening is uh, uh, driving me to, to um, I wouldn't say adjust my views, but just uh, uh, I'm learning uh, uh, I'm learning a lot as all of this transpires. So uh, that's it for tonight. I appreciate everyone signing on and joining me. Uh, as always, if you're interested, if you like these updates, check out uh, our Tree Rings product at fftt-llc.com. It's a list of 10 most interesting things with uh, a synopsis uh, about why we think they are relevant, what they could mean, and get a lot of great feedback on that product. You can also see what we're up to on our website as well. And in the meantime, everybody have a great, uh, have a great weekend and go Browns, or have a great rest of your week and go Browns.